Welcome in guys, we're on to edition two of our speedy buy, hold, risk it and sell. I just want to go through some of the top targets and then a quick chat on all of the potential options heading into round three. So some of the top targets you want to be looking at are going to be in the hooking position. Lusik is the cheapest of these four, but then Tanner Boyd with the jewel is good. I think then Robson for the clear consistent points and then Coruscant number four. For the mids, Terrell May and Cotter, the two mid-range-ish type of plays you want to look at. Isaiah Yeo and Hopgood for your guns. Adam Elliott and Curran. I think I have probably Curran slightly ahead of Elliott due to the dual position, but they're both solid options. Elliott having the lowest break even of that lot, obviously. The edges, the cheapy guys, I think in Fine, Firiaki and Joe Chan, two guys to look at, obviously. Uh, you do have Samuel Afainu is in that slightly higher bracket, about 100K more expensive or just under. You've got Isaiah Papali'i, you've got Hamole Olakawatu are the two guns to have a look at. And then Jeremiah Nanai has probably a little bit of cash to make and looks like he's taking his game to another level. In the halves, it is Fogarty, it is Hines, it's Moses and Galvin. Hines, I think, is going to get the biggest score of all captaincy options this week. Fogarty, really, really solid at that. We'll get through him in a sec. Moses, a little bit more in the bounce back category, could wait. And then Galvin, the best cash cow of the week. Center, you've got... Panasini, Holmes, the two top gun scorers, in my opinion, to go for. You've got Taylor May as well, along with Cobo being the cheapest. Wing fullback, Turbo, I think, is the best guy to buy. He'll pop at some point. Pap, do you wait a week and get him in round five after the buy, or do you select him now? And then if you have enough cover, that's awesome. Teddy, Latrell, Walsh. So Walsh comes up against the Broncos, but he uh, sorry, comes up against the, the Penrith Panthers, but he also has the goal kicking and potentially some more attacking stats um, with, the, with the kicks in general play and the like. So Fogarty, guys with him, I just think he has a little bit more money to make. So I think he's a good buy. Definitely not a risk yet. He's in the buy category, but how clear of a buy it is, is there other potential options you could get this week before going for Fogs? Now he's up against the tougher sides. Move on to Mitch Moses. And he's someone I do think I'm a little bit worried about to buy this week. I think he's a good buy target in round four, but I wouldn't push you away. Obviously the break even is fairly high at that. So on Cobo, I think he's on the risk it side at the moment with a slightly lower break even after a really big game. I don't think he's going to come up against a tougher opponent defensively in the Panthers this week. And I do expect him to go a little bit lower in the 30 to 45 range. So I think he's a risk it play and not something I would be personally going for. Nico Hines, as I said, the best captaincy option for the week up against the Tigers this week and Canberra next week. I expect good scores out of him. He's doing better than what Cleary is, but does have a buy in round five. So buy him this week at your risk that you will be a little bit short in round five. But if you do have Cleary already, or if you went against both, then uh, yeah, I think Hines is the play. And then if you only have him as your only shark, I think you can get away with it. But um, as I said, best captaincy option for the week, Nico Hines. Lockie Galvin, the best cash cow of the week. Just the cheapest, a little bit cheaper than that of Fine Fiuyaki. And at 261K, a one or a negative one break even. Guys, just be aware that the footy stats, footystatistics.com website is slightly different, I think, to, to what the actual break evens are, but they're very, very close. So just always just a ballpark. So it's easier for me to, to show these on here and roll through them the way I like it. But uh, he's a solid one. Obviously he came up against Canberra and they allowed him to get a line break, get some good run meters in that second half last week. I think he'll be in the 30s, but again, that's lots of money to be made if he can be a 30s to 40s scorer going forward. So Galvin is the cashy of the week. Finney, the second best cashy of the week. 293, a bit more expensive, a slightly higher break even. We've also seen him score a little bit poorly at times in certain minutes that he gets. So if he was to get the 50 odd minutes, I do expect something in the mid thirties at best. If he gets more than 60 minutes, then we can get him up closer to like the, the 37s, 38s, 40s. But I do think he'll be a 29 one week, a 40 the next and be somewhere in that mid thirties for Kulakefu. All right, Samuel Afino, 379, a bit more expensive, had a really good game last week with some attacking stats. If he can get these minutes again, he's a buy. I do think you could go for him this week. You could go for him next week. I do see it as a risk it play if you want to go for it. I um, personally am not going to, but I think you could do worse. Siwa Wong, it, the two options this week is either sell him now or hold and loop him this week or hope that he gets back into the side if there is an injury or something like that. So that's the play with Wong. 
Keep it simple with that, given he didn't make the side. Satili Tupanua at 408k. Guys, make sure if you haven't checked out the team list video as well, that really helps in um, you know, a little bit of a follow-up. You can skip through to certain teams or players that you need more information on or go into the buy, hold, risk, sell, big video. I really appreciate all of you guys for, for watching these. At 408k for Satili, I think with all of the issues currently in sides, him priced at 29 again now and has the break even to suit. I do think with the dual position, you can hold him for another week and hope that he goes up against this weaker right edge of the bunnies and can score a try, right? So if you can get a good score out of him, his price, you know, price starts to go up a bit or you could sell him next week against Penrith if you have further issues. Tavir Tatola at 488k, guys. He has a break even of 30, probably lower down the list on, on trade out targets this week with Lukey and the like. But if you don't have any of those guys, I think Tatola, if you need to get to Terrell May, which we'll speak about in a sec, Tatola is one of those guys you can. But the minutes were good last week and his missed tackle number was very, very high. He had it once last year, but outside of that, he doesn't miss that many tackles. So Tatola, he's a hold in my opinion or a sell in that in that bracket there. Lukey's out six to eight week, guys. Sell him. Simple as that. All of these guys I'm talking about are potential options. Terrell May is one of those guys at 574. I think he's, I had him as a must-have last week. We know what I've been you know, saying about him over the last few weeks and um, yeah, Terrell, Killed it off the bench. Uh, killed it in the starting team. You'll play off the bench. You'll still play around the 50 minutes. Should be a 50 plus scorer. About the 50, we can guarantee. I, I think with the minutes and you know, at least 100, 150k to make at that. Joey Lassick at 514. He's the interesting one this week with a low break even. If you have Harry Grant, I do think that Lassick is a terrific pairing with him. You get to cover Grant's buy next week. Lassick comes up against the Tigers in that one. Could potentially get some attacking stats in the next few weeks, like he has the last few. Do expect him to be about a 45 scorer in close to 80 minutes, which is still enough for about 150 in price gains. Very, very good purchase in the hooking position in the mid-range this week. Appy, more expensive with that. He'll be up and down with his scoring, but if the Tigers can kind of come good over the next few weeks, then he will get goals. He will get attack in that. I just think he's more of a risk it play than what Lusick is. is more of like a clear buy with a little bit of risk if he doesn't get attacking stats, but that's that. Tanner Boyd, guys, also a buy. Not a clear buy by any stretch, given he's a you know, a lot more expensive than that of Lassig in the hooking position with the half jewel. But a 43 break even for him. I do expect him to score, obviously, 44 in a, in a team that got absolutely smashed. If they start playing better, they have the Dogs this week and the Dolphins the next two. He could be a 50 scorer and probably have 70 or 80K in gains, I think, over across this year. And a very solid one now that he's buys out of the way. Drew Hutchison, I have him as a hold this week, guys. Comes up against the Titans, who were really bad. He's got nice base. He's he's made a little bit of money. I think he'll be fine this week. We'll have to make a decision on him the following week. But for this one, I do think he's a clear hold. Kyle Flanagan, he's a hold slash sell. In this one, a 371K, I would rather hold Hutch over Flanagan. So if you're selling one to Galvin, then I would pick Flanagan. Just isn't going to get the attack, I don't think, in this side. And then doesn't have the base with his kick meters uh, that you would be hoping for. So, yeah, that's the Dragons really struggling side as well. Moses Suli, guys, at 456. The break even's 32. So I think he'll kind of hold steady over the next few weeks if he can luckily get some attack against some of these better teams that in the Cows and Manly they'll come up against. He'll be able to get into the 40s. But outside of that, if you're copying a 30 from your center, it's better than what I was getting out of Karaz last week. So Suli, a hold. Jacob Kiraz, a hold at 532. As I said, comes up against the Titans this week, and I'm hoping for a bounce back. It's not. It's very rare that he misses that many tackles. Like, it just hasn't happened ever. I think the most he's had outside of that is four, three? Yeah, four in one game. And he had a shock at that one as well, 12 on the wing. But um, I do think a bounce back for him and hopefully that side has worked on their, their defense over the uh, over the week and they can unlock their attack a little bit. He's a hold. Same with Kalen Ponga at 705K. Higher break even a 62, but I definitely think he can come out against a slightly weaker Storm side without their halves and finally go grow into a, the gun that we, we expected him to be in and he was at the back end of last year. So only a line break in each of them. And some goals. He hasn't had any tries, any try assists. And he's still averaging sort of high 30s at 37. He'll be fine. I expect a 50 plus this week. We're hoping for it anyway. And um, yeah, should, shouldn't be able to, shouldn't lose too much money on that. Don Tavojevic with his 45 last week. Keeps a fairly high break even at 42. So if you don't get him this week, 
then you'll be fine. But I do suspect that this next couple of weeks, he should be able to get one big score, a 70 plus. He's got a lovely base right now with offloads and run meters. And if he just gets some attack on that, he has had one try assist in two weeks. If he gets some attack on that, he'll be absolutely flying into the 60s and 70s. Ryan Pappenhausen at 520K. Here's a low break even this week. You can get him this week or you can wait until sort of round five. I do understand why you would wait, but I do think at, you know he could be 550, 560 if he does really well this week as well. So either way is fine. Base it off what you need. Like if you can get him in and have cover next week for him, then that is a good play. If you don't have cover, probably don't trade him in because you're going to have to trade another wing fullback in next week just to cover that week. So yeah, that's that. Tommy Tillow, if you've got him, hold guys because of his, um, yeah, he has been named on the extended. It sounds like his injury isn't as bad. So just hold him, use him as a looper this week if he doesn't play. Josh Curran is in the buy slash risk it category just a little bit more on the buy side just because I the, the minutes are the only worry given there's been a couple of injuries in the two games so far. I suspect he's a 55 minute guy going forward and that should get him into the mid to high 40s which means 100k of gains for a guy that's dual position, plays round 13 and 16. There's a lot of good things to like about Curran at 547. Really, really good purchase. Try and lock him in, I reckon, if you can. Zach Hosking at 697. So he's looking at a, a lovely price rise this week, but unfortunately he's on the bench. So he's a hold for this week and then make your decision based on how many minutes he gets next week. I would still play him in your sides as well. Expect about 50 minutes, I would say. Ricky could do something silly. Like it's, it turns out that Horsburgh is actually is available to play like I thought, but they're going to play him through New South Wales Cup. So very fun what Sticky can do. And um, he does like Hosking. I, do, I don't expect him to play 20 or 30 minutes off the bench. So that would be the rare. And then 50 minutes it would be fine for his output. Last two guys, we've got Adam Elliott, very low break even at 11. I think he's a solid purchase this week, obviously to make some money, but you do hope that going forward, he's a 50 player. Look, 45 and 88 shows that, but can he be a 60 minute guy? And if he is, I think he's definitely a 50 scorer and would be a solid purchase to make about 100K um, and, and score well for you. So he's in the slight, the buy slash risk it category after his big score. And then Jeremiah Nanay, he's in the risk it category for sure, guys, given he got a try in each of the last two games and a try assist in one of them, 58 and 54. He is an attacking style player. So if he can keep his base where it is doing well, not missing too many tackles, running for over hundred meters, then he will be a 50 scorer this year and has hundred K in gains to make. So thank you for participating in this video, guys. Uh, I know a few of you are preferring and liking the short video for those that are, are strapped for time or yeah, only have time for one or two videos. So appreciate that for coming into this one and good luck in your teams in round three.